Travis Wayne Goodso with your daily criticism of the church news, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And if you're like shocked and horrified, how could you do that? How could you miss it? Book of Mormon, the keystone of Mormonism, says it's in the learning of the Jews, not Christian Jesus. I just did the authority video. You're not going to watch it? Going to hide? Run away? Deny that I ever did it? Deny the information in there that this video is obviously referring to? So, an Islamic faith and Jewish family influenced American Idol winner Ian Tongi. Obviously, he's Mormon. So, it's interesting how the church picks and chooses who they want to support on national television. Because there have been some whom they've disowned. And even excommunicated. There's like uh, some reality show where a Mormon girl uh, was on the show... And so she has to sleep with other guys. <laughs> and thus, the church excommunicated her. <laughs> and then, of course, there's the polygamous family that did a TV show. Uh, there is also a woman uh, who, I think she was the the Wives of Salt Lake City TV celebrity who's now doing a book against the church. I can't remember the title of the book or whatever like that. And the church sued her because <laughs> it included the nickname of the church. Because <laughs> the church owns the copyrights to the nicknames. Right? Is that what Nelson meant when he said we don't use nicknames anymore? We're making sure everybody uses the name. And so they sue for a nickname? Dear God. Talk about your obsessive compulsives. And so, yeah, fun times. Donnie and Marie, yeah, no problems. They just don't talk about Marie getting remarried eight times. I think her latest one is her first original husband. And then, of course, there was that interview so long ago talking to Donnie and Marie about blacks not holding the priesthood. Major humiliation and embarrassment for the church. Yep. But then we've got Marriott, who trumps it all. <laughs> magic underwear saved my life. <laughs> it's real magic. <laughs> oh. Mormons. So desperate to prove the church is true with magic. <laughs> you can do magic. There's the thing for the description below. You can do magic. <sighs> Never did get to any of these other three videos. Coming up with other ones too. You can do magic. And so then they also have the current First Presidency Quorum of the Twelve Apostles are the sixth longest tenured in church history. Except that they're in denial that Holland was put on emeritus status. You do know that, right? They didn't officially say emeritus status. They just said he's no longer acting as an apostle. He's bedridden now. He got COVID with his wife and then found out that he also has 
kidney problems for which he now has to be put on dialysis. And so he no longer functions as an apostle, which is exactly what happens when you're emeritus status. <laughs> but you watch. <laughs> if this collapse of the economy somehow threatens the church with Mormons angry and demanding that they get food, having paid tithing, and the church is resisting, and the church members fight back, give me food. And somehow apostles die in the process by the hand of Mormons because the prophets are unable to flee the country to a non-extradition country where they can hide out on a desert island sipping Mai Tais until the storm blows over and then come back and restore their kingdom and put everybody into slavery. <clears throat> if it so happens that they dip to six apostles, that that's it. That's all that's left. Nelson's gone, so a new leader has to be chosen. But in order to choose the president of the twelve, you have to have a majority in the quorum of twelve to make that transition. If you don't have a majority, they cannot conduct business. Okay? This is the trap Brigham Young set for his own church with the change he made. Section 107.22 was Joseph Smith's suggestion. Nobody followed it. Nobody's the true church. I gotta watch the authority video. Hello. And so, I, yeah, six. No longer forms a majority. Which means that six plus the three in the first presidency no more. Gone. But wait. <laughs> Holland suddenly makes a miraculous recovery to be the seventh apostle <laughs> coming from the grave for his emeritus status to choose the oldest survivor, which could be him. <laughs> conundrum <laughs> because he would have to call other apostles and he's too sick <laughs> oh hilarious what potentials we have in store for us <laughs> oh look there's also a, a un updated statement about political neutrality and participation. <laughs> We've compromised both sides of government <laughs> so that they would tank the economy and destroy the world. <laughs> what do you think the religious freedom is all about? It's to get religions to overthrow the government. So that the church can get their kingdom. That's their political position. Screw the government. We want our kingdom back. We want child bride marriages. Which are arranged marriages. The little girls don't get to choose who to be married to. So yes, Elder Holland from the grave... Not that unlikely of a scenario, because he does come back from the grave in the main article. <laughs> he does an essay on the first presidency. Oh, good boy, Holland. You can now die. <laughs> you have shown your loyalty to the true leader. Now go to bed, <laughs> take your pills, go on dialysis. What's up with being positive? I was learning about dialysis from that show. 
and they can't put it on DVD for me? <sighs> See, I was only watching because the blonde was attractive, yet scary. <laughs> <sighs> so frustrating. <laughs> 